Hello, my name is Michael Romeo, and I'm a cutlery expert. You guys seem to really like my previous video on cutlery where I compared expensive versus cheap cutlery. You guys left me lots of great comments and questions. So in today's video, we're gonna be answering some of those questions. And we're also gonna be looking at some really cool cutlery. So stay tuned, let's get started. So it's been a year since I made my last video and I've been up to lots of stuff. I've been traveling the world. So one of the coolest places I got to go to was Nepal and I went to the base camp of Mount Everest. And there I was looking for cutlery used by people who climb to the top of Everest. There unfortunately is a lot of garbage littered by all the climbers who climb up Mount Everest. And there's actually a surprisingly large amount of cutlery there. And the cutlery actually is quite valuable. If you can find a matching set of a spoon, a fork and a knife, sometimes they can go up to $10,000. But I wasn't just looking for any old cutlery. I was actually looking for Sir Edmund Hillary's cutlery set, which he apparently lost at the base camp before he climbed to the top of Mount Everest. So if you can find that, it's about valued at roughly a million dollars. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find it, but I was able to find quite a lot of other unique pieces of cutlery left behind by other climbers. So overall, it was a really fun trip. So now let's answer some of the comments I got on my previous video. One of the comments was, how is cutlery made? To answer that, it varies on what type of cutlery you're talking about. Most cutlery is just stamped out. They use plates of silver or stainless steel and just press it, just press them into the right shape and then they get more and more refined. It's definitely less exciting than it was in the 1800s when they were made by hand and they involved a lot of skill to make. Now they are made in large factories, which makes them way cheaper and easier to get. You don't have to be wealthy to own a nice set of cutlery or silverware anymore. If you wanna see the full process in action, I would definitely recommend watching a How It's Made video because they have the best camera angles and the best descriptions of what's going on. There was another great comment as well asking about the materials used to make cutlery. For your basic set of well-made stainless steel cutlery, you should be looking for 1810 stainless steel. Stainless steel is commonly used because it doesn't dull or wear off and it doesn't affect the flavor of the food. The term 1810 stainless steel refers to the amount of chromium and nickel added to the stainless steel. So it would be 18% chromium and 10% nickel. If you are buying cheaper sets of stainless steel, they can be 18.8, which means 18% chromium and only 8% nickel. You can have 18.0, which is 18% chromium and just less than 1% nickel. And then if you buy some stainless steel from China, you don't know what could be in there. You could end up with like lead or something. So now let's move over to silverware and what to look out for. You wanna make sure that it is stamped with the numbers 925, which is 92.5% silver, which means it is sterling silver. So you're getting the legit thing. The thing with silverware, it does take a lot of maintenance to keep it nice and shiny because it does dull over time and it does involve quite a lot of cleaning. So if you are thinking about getting some silverware, that is something you should keep in mind. So hopefully that cleared up any confusion. So if you do have any more questions about this topic, please comment it down below in the description and I will answer your questions. I also got another really interesting comment asking me if I could review some Arne Jacobson cutlery. Unfortunately, I had just taken my original set to the Cutlery Museum in Pierre, France, and it's currently on display in their mid-century modern cutlery exhibit. But what I do have is a reproduction. This set looks just like the one made in the 1950s, but it was made this year. It's still quite expensive, however. A five-piece set will set you back $100. So let's open up the box and have a look at the cutlery. We have a certificate here proving that this is an authentic product. So let's just dig in. What should we start with? Forks or spoons? For me, I'm gonna go with spoons because I prefer them. So yeah, we're gonna start off with the first one here. We are gonna take it out of the plastic, which unfortunately means this will lose about 25% of its value, but that's okay because in this video, you guys wanna have a better look at things. So I'm okay to do that. However, if you are taking stuff out of its plastic packaging, make sure not to just rip it up. Take a pair of scissors and just carefully just cut off the top. You're just gonna do that. So that way you have a sleeve that you can put the cutlery back into once you're done with it. And then that will also protect it from getting scratched. We're first taking a look at this teaspoon. It is very nicely finished. The shape of this collection is very interesting. It's very oblong and oval shaped. This teaspoon is very good quality. You can't bend it at all. It's really nicely finished. There's no sharp edges on it at all. An interesting thing about these spoons and this set in particular was it was actually banned in Germany because too many people were stealing this set and using the spoons to heat up drugs with. Apparently this spoon has like a really good surface area for the heat and it can just works really well. So they were just being constantly stolen from the stores and it was creating a big problem. So no stores wanted to carry them because they knew that people were just gonna come in and try to steal them. As of 2017, you can find this in stores in Germany, except it will be behind a locked display case. 
Because of all the controversies around this set, many people have started collecting it and it is actually very difficult to get your hands on a set of these. We're gonna open up the bigger spoon now. We are gonna do the same thing we did with the small spoon and delicately cut open the packaging, just like so. And as you can tell, it looks just like the teaspoon, but it's much bigger, obviously, because this one you'd eat soup or cereal or anything else you'd use a spoon for. This spoon has more of an angle to it, so you can hold it better compared to the other one. The teaspoon is more of a flat, it's more flat. Now let's move over to the knife, which is pretty interesting in design. So we'll cut it open. This knife has to be probably my favorite piece out of the set. It's such a unique design. There's no other knives that look like this. Just the way that it dips down at the end is very cool in my opinion. I find that in a lot of cutlery sets, the knives look very similar. They all have the same kind of shape to them. But with this, you're definitely getting something new here, which is what I really like. Police actually really like unique looking cutlery because they find it easier to track down suspects that have committed crimes using them. I was involved in a police investigation one time because there was a murder and they had suspected cutlery had been used, but they weren't sure what type. So they brought me in and I was actually able to tell based off of the markings that it was a pie server from the Vilroy and Bosch La Classica 70 piece set. So based off that info, the police were actually able to track down the person who did it and arrest them, which is really great. Now we're gonna move over to the forks, which in my opinion are my least favorite part of the set. We're gonna start with the big fork first, just cause it's in the next order. And there's a little bit of a smudge there as it's been repackaged, hopefully not. The forks for me are what let this set down. The tines are just so short and the space to eat off of is just really small. If you compare it to the spoon, you can see the difference. Like this fork is tiny compared to, this is not a very big spoon either. And this fork is even smaller than it. So I just feel eating off of it would be really difficult. And also I really think they should have gone with four tines. I just think three tines just really doesn't look very good. They're very short too. I would have liked it if they were longer and if there were four. So that is why I wouldn't recommend anyone buying this to be used as their day-to-day -day cutlery because I think it's more of a display set and it's not really that functional. Now we're gonna have a look at this tiny little fork as well. This is such a little baby boy. He's just so small. Like I don't really see what you could use this for. This fork is just tiny. If you, do you get it? Tiny, haha. <laughs> Unfortunately, the forks really let this set down. It's just, it's a real shame. They had so much potential. Like I really like the whole flatware minimalist design, but just the forks could have been a lot bigger. So overall, I'd rate this about a six out of 10 for functionality and about a nine out of 10 just for looks. While I was in Europe dropping off my Arne Jacobson flatware collection at the French Museum, I also did a tour around a whole bunch of other European countries where I was looking for gravy forks. You may be thinking, did you mean to say spoon? But no, gravy forks actually exist. It sounds kind of strange, but in many countries, they actually have gravy forks. So for a few months, I went to a bunch of different countries in Europe, including Greece, Italy, Spain, Germany, I wasn't able to find the gravy fork from every country. I did get one from Germany and Spain, so I was able to find them from those two countries, which I'm pretty happy about. So you may be wondering, what does a gravy fork actually look like? Well, they look like this. This is typically what a gravy fork will look like. They Each country has their own kind of unique style and twist on them, but mostly they look similar to this. And for some reason, I couldn't find one in France, which is really strange because, you know, they love cooking there. So I thought there'd definitely be some gravy forks that I could find, but there wasn't any. The thing with gravy forks is you can't just go to any store and buy a gravy fork. They are antiques. You have to go to an antique store to find one. So they stopped making them in just after the First World War, just in 1918 is when they stopped making them. So you can't find them in any stores nowadays. They are really hard to find in North America because in Europe they were pretty widely adopted. Like most people had a gravy fork, but in North America, it wasn't really a thing that ever caught on. Most people over here use gravy spoons and gravy that could just be poured out of a little jug. So that's the that's why. So that's just what I love about cutlery, just the history of it and how it's used in different countries. I think it's just truly amazing. I got another comment asking, what should people look for when they're buying cutlery? I feel like this is a very subjective question. It really depends on your tastes and what you're looking to get out of cutlery. You know, I can't really just recommend one specific set. So some things to really focus on when you are looking for cutlery is make sure you get a design you like the look of, which I think is a given. Most people don't want to buy something that they don't like the look of and just try to make sure it is well made. Like I said in my previous videos, the ones that are cheaply made and sold in the dollar stores, you know, they're pretty rough around the edges. They're not nice and smooth. They're really bendy and they're not made out of really good materials. That's about it. There's not really much you have to look for. And then obviously, do you want it in stainless steel? Do you want it in silver? That is all you really have to look for. It's not a very difficult task buying cutlery. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you are buying a really expensive set of cutlery or silverware, 
I would make sure to have a look at it in person to make sure it is what you're looking for and make sure you are getting what you're paying for. Because this one time I thought I was getting this really nice silverware set from eBay, but when it arrived, it was really tiny and all the knives and the forks were like an inch tall. So like it was, it was like basically for like a dollhouse or something like that, but they had listed it as if it was a real set of cutlery. They didn't say it was small. They said like all the dimensions were real dimensions. So they were just trying to scam me. So luckily enough, I was able to resolve that. I was able to get my money back, but it's just hassle and it's kind of annoying. I also got a question asking me what type of cutlery do I hate the most? And for that, I'd have to say sporks or spikes, the spoon fork knife kind of things. I really hate them because they're not particularly good at any part of that. They're not a good knife. They're not a good fork and they're not a good spoon. Whenever I go camping, I just have a small set that I keep in a little carrying case. It doesn't take up that much more room, but it's just so much nicer to eat with than having this thing that you just flip around. And then when you flipped it around to use the spoon, you got all the stuff that was on the fork and it gets in your hands. And some people might just say, why don't you just clean it? But then every time you have to switch it around, you have to clean it. And it just takes more time and more effort. So you can get some really nice camping sets of cutlery that are well-made, good quality, and that aren't a spike. They're just so much better. So just avoid those. So for me, that's my cutlery pet peeve. Comment down below what you think about sporks or spikes. Do you like them? I'd like to know in the comments down below. Someone else commented, what cutlery product would you like to see exist? And to answer their question, I have a weird one. I think it'd be really cool to see cutlery trading cards. They'd have different pictures of cutlery on them and then you could, you know, try to collect your favorite ones. So that is something that if it did exist, I would buy a whole lot of. I'd have a huge collection of them. So. Maybe it's almost good that they don't exist because I'd be spending way too much money on them. Along with all the traveling I've been doing, I've also been designing my own cutlery collection. And so I'm hoping to have that ready within the next few months. I've gotten the knife down and I've gotten the spoon down. I'm still struggling with the fork. Like I said before, forks are really not my favorite cutlery piece. I just, they're kind of boring in my opinion. So I'm trying to make this one unique and make it interesting. So it's been a bit tricky. So fairly soon there should be some official Michael Romeo cutlery available. So we're gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like and please subscribe. And if you have any other questions about cutlery, please comment them down below. Okay.